Hey, what's up guys? My name is Joe Bun, the founder of Bun Gear, and I am here today to do an all new updated assembly video for you guys for the Bun Gear Command Center. So we're gonna get started. Y'all ready? Let's go. Okay, so when your booth arrives, they're going to come in the boxes in their super heavy duty bag. We have the best bags of any DJ gear on the market, I promise you. The laptop stand and the screws or the hardware that you put it together with are probably gonna be strapped inside this top part. I, for the purpose of this video, have put them in the pocket, which is in the top of this bag. So we're gonna start from there. Let's do it. First thing you're gonna do is open this bag up. Here's that pocket I was talking about. So I've got my hardware, my Allen key right here in this pocket. I'll go ahead and pull my rack out. And you know the top because we've actually installed the shelf near the top. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and pull out your base plate. It's in a side pocket right here in this bag. Go ahead and put this on the floor. Now, I will say we did change one thing from the last design. We didn't put any feet on this booth. If you wanna go get some of the 3M felt feet or whatever, get an extra pack because if you slide the booth around, they do come off. But for this iteration of the booth, we did not put any feet on it. Okay, so we got our base plate on the floor. We got our rack out of the bag. Go in our little pocket here and grab our thumb screws. So you'll have eight of these thumb screws, four for the top, four for the bottom, and you'll see four washers in there and an Allen key. That's the only basically hardware bag you'll see usually taped inside this when it comes shipping. So the washers that come in that clear bag with your other hardware, you don't have to use those, but if you're gonna leave the booth put together, I'd probably use them on this base plate assembly. All right, let's get this thing put together. So basically you're gonna put your rack on top of the base plate, and then you're just gonna bend down here. And it's pretty easy to do. You can either line up your main hole here in the bottom, or if you just shift it a little bit, you can start to see where the threads come through on these holes here. So you can line that hole up, or you can line these small ones up. And then what I do is I just start putting in these thumb screws, but I don't tighten them all the way down. I just make sure they go in, they thread a couple times, so now all four are in and all I'm going to do is just go back around and give them a good crank down. Again, you don't have to go crazy with this. There's no need to, you know, damage your thumbs or the booth or anything else, but just give them a good tighten down. Okay, next up, we want to go ahead and put the top on top of the rack. Also in this bag, you will find your laptop stand. So the open end goes towards you. This end towards the audience, obviously. Got two handles built here on the new rail system, if you wanna pick it up like this. Same thing, line up the big hole, grab your four screws, come up and in from the bottom. I have to kind of shift it around a little bit just a little bit of movement there. Again, don't fully tighten them the first time you put them in. Move it a little, there we go. So there it is, all four are in now. Again, I'm just gonna go through and tighten them up. We'll do two at a time if you want, looks like. You can see them coming through here. You, know, you made a good connection. And now you've got the whole booth pretty much assembled. So guys, when you pull your top part out of the bag, you're probably gonna notice this. See this brand right here, the Bun Gear logo? This probably has like a, almost like a masking tape top on it. What you're gonna wanna do is grab a credit card and simply go over that before you peel that off. So leave it on there, take your credit card, smooth it down, and then slowly grab the corner and peel it down. Okay, so now that the booth is set up, there are some initial adjustments that you have to make to the booth before you can take it out to a show. Now keep this in mind. These are things that should take maybe 30 minutes tops with this new rail system that I'm getting ready to show you guys. But unless you change your controller, you don't have to do it again. 
So do this stuff in advance of the event at your house or your studio or wherever. And then when you get to the show and actually set this up, it will take you less than five minutes. All right, let's get into some of this initial setup. So as I said, your laptop stand and this adapter here are probably gonna ship inside your top. It's probably gonna be strapped down in here so it doesn't bang around in transport to you. So you take it out and then you're gonna pull the screen thing off first. Now this is different from the older booths and I'm going to show you how to install this piece first. So I took the green thing off the stem of the laptop stand. And the first thing you're gonna do is just take your Allen key. This, by the way, is a three millimeter. And just go ahead and take these screws out. So depending on where you want your laptop stand is where you're gonna put this green piece. I need to come up with a name for this. The point of it is so that when you put the laptop stem in here and you crank down on these screws, the laptop stand can't spin. That's what this is for. So if you look at the new booth now, you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 holes. This piece and these holes are gonna line up with those holes and it can go any one of these. As you can see, when the booth ships, it comes with the rubber grommets down here. So you can do either one of these. I prefer mine on the right side, the far right, and then I run my cables up through here. So we're gonna do that now. So again, you're just lining up these holes with these holes right here. You got your screw and your washer. Line that up, and that's threaded there on that back rail. Just go ahead and put that right in, and then do your other one. And then you're just going to want to tighten up on it. And unless you change your mind about where you want your laptop stand, that's where it's going to go. The next thing I want to mention, because I get this question a lot, when you put your laptop stand in this hole this is adjustable so this screw here gives you more tension on this so i get mine a good amount of tension it's just like a front wheel bike lock a little bit of tilt to it i've got mine moved all the way towards me because i have short arms if you wanted to though you could take these screws out and push this panel back now here's that thing i was talking about i get a lot of questions on this going in here especially when it is a brand new booth is difficult you're going to want to take chapstick, pomade, Vaseline, and just put a little bit around the inside rim of this rubber grommet, the one that this hole goes into, because you'll see it is difficult to get in and out of until it loosens up. Eventually, after doing numerous shows, this will loosen up and you won't have to worry about lubricating it. Okay, that makes sense to everybody? All right, so laptop stand goes there and you're ready to go. So now I wanna move on to this last phase of the initial setup, which is adjusting these rails in the top part so that your controller is level with your lid. Okay, so here it is, the all new rail system. You'll see completely redesigned inside of this top booth. You got your handles right here, already built into these two bridges, if you will, and there are not multiple parts anymore. It is simply these two rails. Now, when it comes from the factory, it's pretty much set close for players like the Pioneer DDJ SX3 or even the DDJ 1000. It's gonna be close in terms of left to right. You're gonna to have to adjust these guys up and down though to make it sit level with your PVC top. I do wanna make one point. If you have a three-piece setup, so Rain 12s, uh, Rain 72 mixer or turntables battle style and like an S11 mixer or even one of those giant SZ type controllers. You're going to need to make an additional modification before you start leveling it out. You're going to need to obviously move these to the furthest ends. So they have one, two, three, four screws that need to come out here from the bottom. Again, you'll have to take your rails off here and here. And then you'll move this, and you can see the pre-drilled holes, you don't have the drilling holes or anything, just move these all the way to the furthest. Same thing on the other side, all the way to the furthest. 
And then the only other thing you'll need to do is make these bars longer. And you do that by taking these guys out. One, two, three, four, elongating the bar and moving everything as far out as possible and then start your leveling process. So what's the best way to do that? Well, I'll be honest with you. I've tried several different ways. I've tried levels, I've tried tape measures. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's just good old trial and error and a little bit of patience. This system though is a lot easier than the last version, but it is still controlled with your handy dandy three millimeter Allen key. Now, here's how I would probably go about doing this. I'm gonna grab my controller and I'm gonna put it on those two crossing braces. Then I'm gonna grab my lid. Yes, I did add a cup holder. It's really easy to do. And so I already see that it needs to come towards me. Considerably. Shift over a little. You can see it is way too high and that's why it's so tight. It's hitting this XLR jack. So it needs to come down half inch, inch, something like that. So that's when we start just working with the Allen key. First thing I, I see that I wanna do is, since my top is cut really narrow here and the controller is shifted almost all the way towards me, that the back of this controller is almost about to fall off this rail or this bridge or this bar. We can't have that. So we need to move this bar closer to me before we do anything else. So I got the pieces out on each side now. I kind of set those aside, but my bar is still stuck in there. So what I need to do is just shorten this little bar and there are one, two, three, four Allen screws here that I need to compress the bar. I just need to loosen them a little bit. Now I'm able to get the bar out. Next thing I'm going to do is just move it closer to me and extend it out again. Wanna make sure you got your plastic washers back on the inside of these so when they slide up and down, you got a pretty smooth movement. Quick tip on how to do this, you're gonna to wanna to go here and then kind of put your screw there instead of Pushing it all the way ahead. There you go. And then go through. Then you got plastic washer on the other side of that screw. And then this thread's already built in here. You just give it a little hand tighten, but don't tighten it all the way up yet because you got to do the other side as well. So now, as you can see, We've got movement up and down these tracks here. So now is where you need to start leveling out your controller. And definitely a pro tip is to loosen these four screws on this inner bar and to loosen both of these before you start trying to do a ton of movement. So I'm gonna start a little lower than this front bar because that is how we saw that it was too high. And then I'm just gonna tighten down on these side screws for right now. What you might wanna do is have yourself a little level as you're doing this, or maybe even a little bit longer one than this. On this first rail here that I installed, it's pretty close from left to right. So now let's bring this one down and try and make it level with that and do another test fitting. Again, you're only gonna have to do this one time. Don't panic. Okay, you saw what I did there. I took the level and put it across the bridges and made sure that they're level with each other. Now let's tighten it down and do our test fitting again by putting the controller in. See how close we are. Okay, let's take test fitting number two. Controller, it's definitely closer. Definitely not hanging off that back rail now. Let's see how we're doing here. Might be too low now. Yes. 
So it needs to probably come up like a quarter inch. As you can see, it's a little too low. So here's what's hopefully our final fitting and we're back to our level. So we're setting the level on the edge of the table or of the edge of the command center and then the other end of it on the actual controller itself so that when it is level in this middle bubble here, we should be able to stop. So we need to loosen both of these up again. And then bring them both up until we see it level out. So this, if you wanted to use this leveling method or this level method, this is where you might need another set of hands. So I brought Jeb in here. So he's basically holding the back rail. We got both of these loose. You come up a little bit on your side, Jeb. No, down a little now. Looks like I can come down a little up. So that is completely level now with the top. Now I'm just going to crank back down on these while the level is still sitting there. So less eyes done, we're going to come around on this side and do the exact same thing. Okay, so we tested out this new leveling method. Let's see how the lid fits. It's a little bit high on the back side. It really depends on how you like it. So technically, it looks really flush on this side. I think these back rails are a little bit high. So I'm gonna do one more fitting, drop this back out. Just the back rail, just a little bit. Okay guys, so we're all leveled out. Honestly, First time even having a booth in the studio to film for you guys. It probably took about a half hour. Jeb, would you agree? About a half hour to get it done. A Little bit of a pain in the butt, I'll admit it. A Little bit of trial and error. I think that the level did help us a little bit, but we're pretty leveled out. This is probably the best I've ever been able to do with any version of the booth. I could still mess around with it a little bit more if I wanted to really, really be super perfect, but I'm happy with it and we are moving on to the next step. So at this point, we're almost ready to start DJing. All you gotta do, put your laptop stand in. Again, lubricate the opening. Make sure these screws on the green thing are loose and make sure this is seated all the way down. You can actually feel it when it hits the, the metal part of the booth, the bottom of the booth. Perfect, tighten up on those screws. Two black screws on that green piece. So once the stem goes all the way through and hits the bottom of the booth, you're gonna to wanna to tighten these guys up so your laptop stand up and spin any. Just finger tighten them, it's good. Prevents that, yeah. Run your cables up through there. Then you're gonna swing your brand new, all redesigned hook out for your microphone or your headphones. If you wanna buy another one at bungear.com, you can, and it'll go right here in this pre-drilled hole. So then you have your microphone here, your headphones here, throw your lid on top, and you're ready to rock. Now, some of you guys may have bought the antenna kit for your antennas that have BNC connectors on them, and you'll see that the booth when it ships, comes with these little Bun Gear branded plugs on the side. That's because underneath here are the pre-drilled holes for your antenna kit, these little Neutrik BNC connectors. So all you're gonna do is remove these two screws. They have little nuts on the back. You're gonna take the plate off. You're gonna put this in, use the same screws and nuts. And then of course, once it's on the inside, you just connect your BNC cable to that end and your other BNC cable to the back of your microphone and you are good to go. Attach your antennas to here and you're ready to rock. Okay, one more thing I wanna talk about is this rack and we actually added two more rack spaces. So this is a 12 space shallow rack if you wanna mount microphones or a custom panel from NLFX to have all your connections brought down here 
or maybe a processor or anything like that or if you just want to have shelves in here uh, you can get those at bungear.com as well there is really one important thing when you're putting your rack together that you need to know this very top hole has to be your starting point in other words your top hole on your first piece of rack gear needs to line up with that top hole you cannot cheat it up above it to try and get more space again the top hole on your top piece of rack gear needs to line up with this very top left and right holes and then start building your rack down you've got 12 spaces and then you got plenty of room underneath even if you went and filled the whole thing up to put your extra cables that are running to your speakers i use that for my little extra cable cubby if you will so one last thing i want to point out before we wrap this video up is that I do leave my controller inside the top part at all times. How? I basically take this controller and I use heavy duty Velcro and Velcro it to the rails that are inside. Then before I pack it up, I put one of these heavy duty handy dandy deck savers on top to protect all the knobs and such. And then you can wrap a bungee around it or anything else to keep this on so that it doesn't fall off. I would take my four screws out. I would take my laptop stand off. I would fold my hook in, pull it out. And then here is your biggest pro tip of the day. Instead of trying to set this bag up and put your gear in it, <laughs> somebody else showed me this. Take your bag and drape it over your gear. So that is gonna be the easiest way. Same thing with the top. Stand the unit on its side, take the bag, drape it over the top. Common sense, but I was missing it the whole time as well. Don't feel bad. So that's it guys, from taking it out of the bags to setting it up, to assembling it, to adjusting the rails, to putting it back in the bags. I think you've pretty much seen it all today. I hope you guys are enjoying your command center if you already have one. If you don't and you just watched this video and you're thinking about buying one, trust me, I love mine. I take it to every single gig I do. The users, the buyers that have had these and we've shipped them all over the world, they love theirs too. You can go to Bun Gear Fans on Facebook and look at that page and see all of the different setups and modifications they've made or even our Instagram at Bungear. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'm out.